Hello again everyone, Scott here. I thought I'd do a video today on how to set up the Pizzazz TC system on your bike. Uh, I found that it was quite a lengthy process to get the system working, um, working well I suppose and, and to and to get the benefit of the, of the power of the software. You can't, uh, just know that you can't um, just plug the thing in and set up the cells in the, in the spreadsheet in the software with a number five in them all and then go out there and do record lap times. It doesn't work like that. Uh, it's a great tool, but unless you're prepared to really delve into it and put some work into it and put some thought into it and I'm talking about a lot of thought well you're not going to get anywhere with it it, it, it really has to be uh, set up for each track that you ride at and almost set up for each corner now the thing that I found worked the best for me was to set it up in conjunction with using a data collection system uh, like a GPX Pro or uh, Quartstar, I think they're called, but some sort of GPS based system that you can connect a, a, in particular your throttle position sensor to uh, and your RPM sensor to. So you can, and, and I guess your gear as well. So if you can collect that data on the racetrack so that at any point on the racetrack you know what gear you're in, uh, what RPMs you're doing and what your throttle position is, then you can sit down with that information at each corner and you can start building your traction control spreadsheet. So it takes quite a lot of work to do this, believe me. You, you can't it's not designed to uh, do all the thinking for you. The, the, the tool's there, it's a great tool. The software is there and it's, it's good software and it's very easy to use. But that's just the tool to get, um, to get your thinking into the system. It doesn't do it for you. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I, I, I think I've got a reasonable feel for how this whole thing works now. Uh, so I'll show you what I've done and um, then you know, maybe that'll help you set up your own uh, traction control maps. Okay, so thank you. What you're looking at here is an onboard video of one lap that I'm doing on my CBR600 at the local raceway. Now I've collected the data from the GPX Pro and I've used the Dashware software so I've overlaid it onto the video and synchronised it. So at any particular point you can see the speed, the RPMs, the throttle position and lap time and also um, the g-forces. But the two things you really want to concentrate on are the RPMs and the throttle position. So as I go around the lap, uh, you should notice, it should click that the TC map that you build in the system where the horizontal axis is RPM and the vertical axle is the percentage throttle opening that at the low throttle opening, small throttle openings, you want a higher sensitivity number because as you come into the corner, you're on a closed throttle, um, you then crack the throttle on and it might be at about 5% um, as a maintenance throttle. As you get near the apex, you start winding that throttle open. So your maximum lean angle is when your throttle is you know, maybe 5 or 10% just as you're coming through the apex. So that's when you want the highest TC number. And then you take note of what the revs are. Um, so you can you know, have a higher number at the revs when you're at the apex of the corner. As you're coming out of the corner, your lean angle is decreasing and your throttle opening is increasing. By the time you get to 70 or 80% throttle, you don't really need any TC because by then you're just about upright. So if you watch the lap and watch the throttle position and the RPMs, hopefully it'll click and you'll see what I'm getting at. So 
Okay, here you can see the Excel spreadsheet that I developed to manage my 2C mapping thoughts. Now, on the left there you can see the vertical axis, which is the percentage of throttle opening, and then on the horizontal axis at the bottom is um, the RPMs. It goes up in 500 RPM increments. So, the bluish uh, shaded area in the middle there from 7,500 RPM to 12,000 RPM that's <coughs> generally the um, RPM uh, as I'm you know, coming out of corners on, on our local racetrack. So you can see that at the lower throttle openings um, so 5, 10, 20 percent I've got a TC sensitivity figure of 7 and then I drop it down to 6 for the 30 to 50 percent opening because you know now I'm further out of the corner and, and getting less lean angle and then you can see how it, it then ranges um, you know down to 4 uh, once I get up to 100 percent throttle opening and then if you look to the right you can see as the revs um, you know, increase, well then I drop it even more because if you're revving at uh, 14, 15,000 revs on a 600cc motorcycle, <coughs> you're, um, you're generally not in a corner. Um, you know, that, that's more by the time you get out of the corner and uh, you're upright and you're on the straight, well then you're full throttle, you're, you're high revs and uh, you don't really need that traction control working at all. So that's the map that I came up with for our local circuit. Now every every track's going to be different. It depends on the gearing. Depends on um, uh, you know all sorts of things. So the so that's the map that I developed for our local circuit, and then I uh, copied that into the Bazaz software. Now if I scroll down, I've got uh, another map here where it shows the effect. This is connected to the, the one above, but it shows the effect of um, what the trim switch does. So you can see that yellow cell up there. Um, so if I've got the switch on minus two, that's the effect. Um, that, that's the main area that I'm interested in because that's you know, that's what I'm going through corners, going through and coming out of corners. So I generally run the um, my system at around about minus minus two, um, but you can see the effect if I change that to say a minus three. That that's what I'd end up with, and sometimes I'll run minus three. So I, I hope that explains. Um, how to set it up uh, and you'll probably also notice that I'm only um, starting from about four and a half thousand RPM because I never really get below about six or seven thousand anyway on the track uh, and you know you're going up to about fifteen and a half sixteen thousand on a 600. Now I, I've put a link um, in the description of the video or in the, in the about section, I've put a link to RapidShare um, for this file so you can download it if you like and then you know set up your own base map in here depending on the corners and you know what sort of revs you're, you're doing at the apex of the corners. <coughs> and then of course you have got a, a switch in the Bazaz software where you can add or minus uh, you know, to those numbers depending on a particular gear that you're in. So um, that facility is there as well. Um, so I hope, hopefully, that gives you an idea of how to do it. I can't, I can't really uh, go into any more detail on that, really, because it really, you really have to look at your track. Um, you know, what gear you're in. Um, what revs you're doing at the apex, all those sort of things. It's different for every circuit. But uh, hopefully this will give you 
an idea of what you have to do to get it all set up. So I'll leave that with you and remember I'll put a link to this spreadsheet. I'll put this spreadsheet onto RapidShare so you can download it and uh, you can play around with it and come up with your own map. Okay, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to get your final map once you're happy that you, you've got it all right. Just how easy it is to get that map from Excel into the Bizazz software. So what I'll do is I'll just minimise that a bit. I'll make it a bit smaller so you can just about see the whole... Yes, you can see the whole map there. So what you have to do is, the, as I said before, the reason I've made all of those cells uh, filled with colour is just to remind myself that you have to actually select the entire grid including the vertical and horizontal axes and all you do is go right click copy now I'll bring up the pizzazz I've just got it in offline mode here's the, um, the spreadsheet in in the pizzazz software with the traction control and just somewhere in the in the body of the table there just uh, put your cursor in there right click and go paste entire grid so do that and there it is so you can see how it dropped it into the uh, pizzazz software so now the map's sitting in there and that's the trim switch position which is sitting on uh, just show you yeah that's the trim switch position which is sitting in on zero at the moment because so this is an offline mode but um, yeah if you have that on minus one it'll just subtract one from all those numbers so hopefully that shows you how easy it is I've always found it far easier just to do all the work on the Excel sheet and then just dump it straight into the pizzazz software also remember once you've dumped your map into the spreadsheet within the Bazaar software. Just remember to put in your cut level, which is the column on the left hand side there. Now the cut level again is a number from 1 to 10. Um, these numbers don't really mean anything, they're just a relative number, 10 being the, the, the strongest cut to the spark and uh, you know, 1 being the weakest cut to the spark. So. Uh, you can put tens in there if you wish and you've got probably more chance of feeling it or you may um, you may want a, a stronger cut at lower throttle openings and then a lesser cut as the throttle opening gets bigger because you're by then you know out of the corner and got less lean angle but just whatever you do make sure you put a number in there because if you don't it won't be working then the other thing is also that you have this facility down here where you can add or subtract to these numbers here for a particular gear. So, you know, for example, you might have a, all the corners might be um, third gear corners or very similar, but you've got one gear that you, one corner that you go through in, say, fifth gear, a very high speed corner, and um, you may be at higher revs, so you might need to, you know, knock a knock a couple of numbers off. So you might put a minus two or three or something like that in in um, in this section here, and you can just, you know, toggle it up or down. So you might have a minus three, for example. I'm not, you know, I can't make any recommendations here. I'm just showing you what you can do. So you've got quite a lot of scope to manipulate your base table here depending on the circumstances for the particular circuit you're, you're looking at. So that's about all I can really show you. Uh, I hope you find that helpful. I just hope it gives you the, the, you know, the, the sort of ideas and the things you need to think about to be able to build your own uh, TC map within the Bazaar system. It's a tremendous system. 
Um, and for those of you that don't know, it just monitors the acceleration of the crankshaft. So it's, from the way I understand it, it's basically mapping or plotting the acceleration of your crankshaft, uh, which should be a fairly steady uh, increase as you're coming out of a corner. And then if it detects that the acceleration is, is suddenly uh, increasing more, more um, at, at a rate quicker than what it was just a nanosecond ago, well then it'll cut a spark because it's detecting that perhaps the rear wheels started to break away, started to spin, um, and so it'll start cutting spark. So that's how it works. Um, so that's it fellas, I hope you found that helpful, and remember you can download that spreadsheet for your convenience from RapidShare.